Uh, briefly go through. I didn't know we have a pull up here. Building, we talked about doing pull ups, right? Why it's so important. One of the biggest problems with paddling, uh, grabbing a paddle shaft and pull up also, the 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 concept of uh, flexing your arm, your fingers first, and it kills your core. It stops mm -hmm. you from using core. Mm -hmm. It's analogous to pull ups, yeah. Because if you think about your paddle gear, it's basically when you when you're planting yourself in the water, you're basically doing a pull up. Mm -hmm. If you think in those terms, then you understand why you want to do a pull-up. What, what, what we talked about on Thursday, why when you overgrip your shaft and you pull, is the same reason why a pull-up does not work, why most people cannot pull themselves up because they're just using their arms. I'll show you what I mean. Most people start with... You can use your tears. Make it easier. It's actually short. So most people start with pull-up, gripping the death grip on the bar, right? And I just, what was... Oh, Who, me? Yeah. Joe. Joe. What I just saw Joe do was he gripped it hard. He he was already completely flexed with his arms and elbows pointed forward and pulling out with his arms mostly. Yeah. The way to do a proper pull up by your legs is not over grip. Just hook your hands here, right? Be completely relaxed because when you paddle, you're initially you're completely complete relax. Your muscle belly is fully stretched. And you have to pretend there's a sheet of glass here. And all you're doing is sliding yourself up this sheet of glass. Look. Mm. Okay. My hands are not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not using my hands. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's much more effective when you, and this is your paddle stroke too, look. And you, you really don't use your arms much, look. I mean. Your hands are hooks. Your hands are hooks. Just like when you paddle. Mm. So going back to hook tier, on the horizontal, right? and you're basically planting and pulling with your lat. So of course the motion is you're planting here and moving it up to the entry point. The minute you squeeze this, you're going to yank it. You're going to engage your forearm and bicep. <coughs> if you push it, you're going to engage your forearm and tricep. So if you have the discipline, <coughs> and it doesn't matter how much weight you move, you know, you can buy those bands, those elastic bands with the handles, you can tie it, step on it, because you want to learn how to uh, do a pull up relax. And <clears throat> what Joe was doing also was, you're not letting your muscle stretch, right? See, most people do pull ups like this. Guess what, they paddle like this too. Guess why you see people go like this? Stiff, awkward, and no power. Okay? So forget about the technique part. Focus on the biomechanics and the physiological aspects of it. If you want to get stronger in anything you do, you want to have full extension of your muscle, full contraction as much as possible. If you're just trying to build a big muscle, you see bodybuilders do these half reps. They're trying to increase the thickness of the muscle fiber, so they're trying to fit a certain aesthetic. But that's what body does. And I'll tell you, as we get older, you're gonna lose your range of mobility and, and flexibility. Why accelerate that? In fact, you need to do the opposite. In anything you do, if you want to be a better athlete, what is running? Uh, propelling or what, you need to lessen the load and focus on your flexibility and your range of motion. So if anything you do in cross training limits your flexibility and your range of motion, it's don't be the wrong thing. That's why I'm a firm believer in doing yoga. Yoga is all body weight, it's all stretching and contraction. Uh, particularly Hatha Yoga which is flex and release because paddling is flex and release, flex and release. Swimming is flex and release. Running is flex and release. Right. <coughs> uh, Ali, you drive this morning, I'm driving to, to work, I see like, this old guy particularly. He's already lopsided. If you're in that much pain, you should not be running. <laughs> right? If you're paddling in that much pain, you should not be paddling that way or paddling. Because impact and mobility is what kills you. I mean, literally kills you. So. One of the first things we want to talk about is you have to paddle this way when you are smooth and fluid. I know it's not easy, right? So, you know, the, the, the range of motion to rotate forward, you see? 
I tried, no matter what, my one man. I just saw those guys go out. Why not stop doing this already, right? That's the worst thing you can do. I always tell people, try to get away with murder, right? Get the most amount of speed for the least amount of effort, right? It feels like you're cheating. It feels like cheating because you're not using your small muscles, using your big muscles. Same with pull up. So if you think about how we paddle in a race, do you guys know how many strokes per side you guys change out? Us old guys, eight to ten at most. Changing? Yeah, we change on eight. Get out nine. The entire race, right? Because if you stay too tight on your fatigues, I, this is what the guys in the forty. We are not forty, unfortunately. We're actually fifty. <laughs> we lying to ourselves, right? So, so we do that because at fifteen, you're not at the after the ten stroke. You're already done. <laughs> So I, I tell them, you want to do 15 strokes of tight, you better be able to do 15 pull-ups with me. No, I'm serious. That's how you test it, right? You want to know where your benchmark is personally for your one man, right? That's why when we talked about Thursday, I said, it's always you have to do your self-assessment where you're at, right? Because if one guy in a canoe can do 15 pull-ups unassisted, one shot, and the other guy can do two, guess whose ass they're carrying? That one get does two. So the guy that does two pull-ups, you gotta do some homework before you show up for practice, right? Because otherwise the rest of your crew are carrying you. Right? And and, and that's bad in any situation, in war, in anything. So, you know, when you guys form your own nucleus, you gotta you know all work you I I, I always encourage all my team members to not form a clique but work out together. And I think then this told I come here for the social aspects of it, yeah? <laughs> yes? That's part of it. You see, when you train as a group, it's so much less painful. <laughs> it is. The pain is much greater when you're struggling by yourself, but when you have somebody training with you, first of all, you don't look at an ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, train with somebody, even outside the canoe. You know, meet at the bottom of King Camp Street Hill, right? Guys? Right? Power walk up that hill, eight minutes, stop. Do 10 push-ups. Power walk another 10 minutes. Do another, I mean, I'll break it up, you know. Um, those of you who have my email sent to me, I'll send you a cross-training guide as well. And what you see in the cross-training guide is always basically non-impact CrossFit workouts, specific to water sports, because water sports is non-impact, right? The problem with a lot of people who do CrossFit at our age, all this overhead lifts, most people don't do Olympic lifts properly, right? So you injure your joints, back, knees, everything. So my philosophy is always, the reason why we're here for water sports is because it's really, really good for you and it's not injurious. Therefore, your cross training should be like that too, right? Now, when you paddle in nature and the waves are bumping and so it's random. So your cross training should be random also. So when you guys train together in, the, in your cross training, it should not be a routine. Guys, whenever I hear, oh, I have my workout routine, I do this on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Well, the only time you have a routine, your practice day, that's an organizational issue. But it's not a physiological issue. It's not physiologically efficient to do that. The more randomized your actual homework is better. And I mean homework, stuff you have to do your own. And your self-assessment actually will determine what you should be doing. And I'll tell you, get a role, get, you know, when you get that uh, uh, cross training guide from me, right? Buy a set of dice, right? <laughs> Number the exercises, I mean, 
there you can make up like 40 exercises, right? Number them. Roll the dice. Some days you just roll the dice. Whatever, whatever God tells you, that's what you're going to do, right? Because it's always a, a, a series of about 12 to 15 exercises. And my... <clears throat> And whenever I go to a, a club or something like that, I see guys doing this, doing this, I'm like, hey guys, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. What do you do in life that does this? Other than drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at Oktoberfest, the, the month, yeah, yeah, I get it, right? Because you got to train for that. Right. that. I mean, it's so heavy, a big glass, a gallon of beer, about ten, but there's no, there's nothing in life we do that does that, right? So what I'm trying to get at is, I haven't done a bicep curl in probably 15 years, right? And I'll tell you why, because if you just did that pull up, you hit everything in, right? Look, look, look what you're doing. You're, using, you're working your forearms, right? You're pulling with your lat, your bicep, right? You already did the whole thing, right? And you're using your abs to do it. You wanna make it harder? Do a leg lift and pull it up with the knees up. Simple stuff like that. So I find most gyms to be completely useless. I mean, I used to have a company that we, we uh, did bod body build, uh, bo uh, sportswear apparel for, for training, fitness training. And one of the things that when we sponsor bodybuilders, they're trying to mold the body into a certain thing. They're not functional. So if whatever you're doing in cross training is non, what I call multi-plane compound movements, it's probably completely useless. You're not going to get stronger. Because when you're paddling, and I'm specific to paddling, swimming, running, you never use one muscle at a time. Not, not even throwing darts. Right? It's, it's the whole arm. So why train that way? So again, it goes back to the original principle I talked about when you're doing cross training. It's, it's good that, I don't mean I'm picking on you, Joe, but when I saw you do that, I'm like, okay. You only saw the last that, one. The first five the, were right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if the first one is right, stop there. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Right? Because, because, you know, when you keep doing stuff wrong, you're burning in muscle memory wrong. So stop there, recover. I, I'm telling you, if, if, if you're gonna have, if your goal is to do 12 pull-ups, whatever, 15, and you can't do all of it, don't worry about it. I, I have the same thing with my 14-year-old son, who was a skinny little thing. I had to spot him, you know? And so I said, uh, the goal for this set is 15. He said, I can only do three. Well, do three first, stop for three, four seconds. Because when you're young, you have quick recovery. Go do another three, another three, and then, oh, see, now you got the 15. Yes, it took you a whole minute and a half to do it, but you did the whole 15, right? But you do the whole 15 with perfect form. Next week, you're gonna do the whole 15 again, but with more per set did you stop. You're like, it's like a mini set within a set, right? And so, we always talk about, I always tell my, my, my students, incremental gains, are actually better for you and then to what I call just max out and then you're so so injured that you're out for three days now what does that good to do right so that doesn't work either so do what you can handle but have a goal in mind as we talked about Thursday paddle with a purpose cross train with a purpose right however if your purpose is to be Mr. Olympia that's a different kind of training right and I can tell you, when you go to a gym, you can see guys with big traps, big deltoids, and you actually watch them train, they, they don't move a lot of weight, right? They're just flexing. And you know, you look at the human body, it's always self-proportioning, right? In, in, I'm not just going through this stuff in just a physiological stuff in response. You cannot build a big chest unless you build bigger legs because your body will self-regulate your size. Mm -hmm. So the only way to get around this endomorphism is steroids. So guys, big traps. This is a very hard muscle to build. The only time you see guys with big traps and do very little weight is because that's the only way steroids work, right? You can tell right away, really big specific muscles, but they never train for it. But it's not very athletic, it's not, it's very healthy for you. So people take shortcuts, they don't look natural because they don't do it naturally. Like, I can see everybody here are natural athletes. So it's encouraging no to see that.
you may have bionic parts, but <laughs> pretty much, pretty much is uh, uh, non, not, not, not steroid induced, right? For people that have a hard time going one, can you show how you squat? Yeah. yeah. So here, let me spot you.